Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and by the end of this three part series, you will have a good understanding of how to use Adobe Premiere Pro, the key functions that it has and also how to create better videos. So let's not waste any time and jump straight into it. If you do like this content, then please do like and subscribe and join the community. And also let me know in the comments if there's anything that you want me to spend a bit more time going over, I'm happy to create bespoke videos for our community. So let's jump straight into this. The first thing we're gonna do is create a new project. So we're gonna click on new project, and the first thing we want to do is give it a name. So for this, we're going to call it demo, but definitely call the project something that you're going to remember. I, I see a lot of beginners when they start out, they just call it un untitled or anything and they forget to organize things because they actually think they'll be quicker by not organizing their file structures. And if you do that, it comes around to bite you in the ass in the long term because you'll go back to edit that show rule or that video or whatever it is that you're doing again and you won't have a clue where your files are or anything like that. So we're gonna call this demo and also we're gonna pull it in a nice location. So I've already got the location set here, but actually um, this is gonna be on a side of one of our projects that we're working on at the moment. So it's in FPV. We've got an assets folder that contains all of the assets. So the videos we're gonna be using. We've got an exports folder that is ready to take the exports when we're finished our video and then the projects as well. The opener is something else that we're doing on the side. So you want three folders, assets, exports and projects. Keep it super neat and super simple so that you can go back at any time and find exactly what you need relevant to this project, which for us is the FPV. FPV project and we're going to put this into demo because obviously we're doing a demo today so we're going to choose that folder we're going to call it demo v5 actually because I've done a couple of other ones since while I was testing a few things out to find out what's going to work best for you guys because there's so many complicated videos and on how to use Adobe Premiere Pro and it's really not necessary you can create amazing content by keeping it as simple as possible so that's what I want to do I just want to give you the stuff that you're actually going to use and not go into all the details of things you can do if you're a professional editor and you want to go in depth you know, super high depth um, into these videos. So we're gonna give you the premise of the main things you need to create a good video. So that's all we need to do here. We're gonna click on OK and that will create the project for us. And this is basically where you're gonna do all your work from. This is your assembly line. And then we will move into editing, color, effects, audios, etc. So at the moment, let's start with assembly. We need to bring our clips in here. So we're gonna click on import media to start. Now you've got a choice here. You can double click this and it will open up um, a window to allow you to bring that content across to you but we're actually not what we're going to do is we're going to drag and drop from our assets folder that we already have we're going to drag and drop that into Adobe Premiere Pro right now that's come straight through and that's great now one of the things that really confused me when I started with Adobe was putting this stuff into folders now they call folders bins. So when you create a new bin, all you're doing is creating a new folder. Now that sounds really simple, but that threw me. I don't know why they've called it a bin and not a folder. It drove, drove me insane, but you should use bins because it keeps everything super neat. So we're gonna call this assets, and then we're gonna create a new bin as well, and we're also gonna call that music. Okay, so we're gonna take our assets right here, drag them into assets, and our music. You've got two different types of views at the bottom. You've got an icon view and you've got a list view. So if we went into icon view, you can see the icons. If we go into assets, you'll see the visual representation of those video thumbnails when they decide to load. But I generally like to use list view because it keeps things really, really um, nice and uniform and makes it just look pleasing, pleasing to the eye. Now, the next thing we need is a sequence. So the sequence, we're gonna go down here, new item, and we're gonna click on sequence. And again, this is something that I, I see tons of questions about this all the time. What sequence is the best one to use? We generally use a 4K timeline and we'll use a custom sequence. So we'll go over into settings. We will select custom at the very top. We will then change the frame size into our 4K settings, uh, whatever they are, put the numbers in there. And we will pretty much then go maximum bit depth, maximum render quality, and then go OK, or we'll save that as a preset. If you're not shooting in 4K, or if you are, but you want to manipulate the footage further, then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna, generally speaking, use the AVC HD 1080p timeline. For us, 
Over here, we're shooting in 25 frames a second or 50 frames a second for slow motion. If you're um, shooting in 30 and 60, then just pick the one that corresponds with your content. Now, here's something that you really do need to keep in mind, otherwise you're gonna have loads of problems and your footage is gonna look horrible. If you, want to film something for the purpose of slow motion, let's say for argument's sake, you're filming in 50 frames per second, then you don't want to create a 50 frame a second timeline. Because if your timeline is 50 frames per second, and your content is 50 frames per second, you can't slow it down because there's no additional frames for you to be able to do slow motion with. But if you're filming in 50 frames per second and your timeline is 25 frames per second, then that means your content has one frame extra for every frame of the timeline. You have to stick with me here, it does get a bit confusing. But that eventually means that you can slow your footage down by half and then that enables you to use slow motion because you have the available frames to use from the content that you've shot. So keep that in mind, that's where a lot of people go wrong because they'll film in 50 frames, they'll create a timeline in 50 frames, they'll slow it down and the content will be juttery and really horrible, so don't do that. So for the purpose of this, we're gonna go 1080p at 25 frames and we're just gonna call this demo one. And again, my suggestion would be to create a V1 here, version one, because you'll want to create lots of different versions. And then the last version, so if it's V9 or V5, the highest number will always be the one that you're currently working on. So we're going to click on OK here. And that is how you start to import your projects into Premiere Pro or create your projects, import your assets. So for instance, I'm going to take this clip here, which is uh, currently 50 frames per second. This was taken from some of our FPV fly through stuff that we've been doing recently. We drag that into Adobe Premiere Pro and you can see it's asking us, do we want to keep the existing settings or change them? From what I've just said, what do you think? We obviously need to keep the existing settings because we want the 25 frames per second in order to slow the content down. If we change the sequence settings to 50 frames a second, we lose that ability to slow down our footage. So we're gonna go keep existing settings and you can see it's loaded back in here at the moment. This is one of the fly throughs. I've picked the worst angles to show you, but trust me, it turned out really good. So I'm gonna leave it here for the point in time because you know, now know how to set up your project correctly import it, why we create the certain sequence, and in the next part of the video, I'm gonna show you some of the keys and functions on how to start creating a really nice video for your customers or for you to personally show off to your friends and family. Make sure you check out that part two. That will be dropping very, very soon. If you've liked this video particularly, let me know in the comments below. Hit the subscribe button. Until next time, peace.